Want to see my latest Fuji film? You know, every now and again, someone say to me, I've got this box that I want to give you because you might find something useful in it. We were going to throw it out. And I've learned over the years, say yes. Because if you open the box and there's full of junk, you can throw it out. But sometimes you find stuff in there that's worth exploring. And I've found numerous lenses and camera systems over the years people have given me and somewhere in there will be something quite useful, intriguing. And you just say, yes, thanks. So a friend of mine, hello Frank, has been saying to me for a few weeks now, oh, I've got something to give you, I've got something to give you. So finally the other day he did. He gave me it uh, in this black case, and I had no idea what it was. I presumed it was a camera. And when I opened up, I was transported back to the 80s. 80s design here in the Hanamex 35FX. Back in the 80s, they designed a lot of things like that. They played with the colours, they played with the plastic on lots of different consumer goods. Boom boxes, numerous cameras, uh, telephones, bedside clocks, you know, alarm clocks, little TVs, even Barbie. The 80s were full of this sort of thing. So, apart from the design, is it any good? Well, it really is a very, very basic point and shoot. So what do we know about this camera? Well, very little. Hanamix 35FX. There's not much on the internet about it. What you can tell from the camera pretty much tells you all you need to know. It is a very, very basic point and shoot. Now the lens is a 38mm, but who knows what the aperture is. It'll be pretty mid-range, 5.6 or maybe even 8, something like that. It's certainly not a wide open uh, aperture. The ISO or ASA is controlled simply by what film you put in, but there's no way of the camera knowing whether you've got a 100, a 200, or 400 in there at all. There's no setting here you can change, so uh, how your exposure is going to go is pretty much potluck because there isn't a, an aperture control either or a shutter speed control. All you can do is load the film point and hope. It does have a flash which you can turn on and off. It's controlled by two AA batteries in the bottom uh, and that's the only thing the batteries control. So you can run this camera without batteries, you just don't have a flash then. Uh, you do have a cover over the lens and when it's closed it disables the shutter. When it's open then you can actually take photos so you're not going to get any lens cap on photos straight through viewfinder, a wind on knob and when you're done a simple wind back the film thing here and a film release where you press a button on top so that you can wind the film back. That is about it as far as uh, what you can do with the camera. Basically put the film in, press the shutter, job done. So what do we know about Hanamix? Well there's a bit of information online about it. Uh, it started off as Hands Import Export, hence the name Hanamix. It was going pretty well in Australia and New Zealand, or Australasia as they call it, importing uh, a lot of camera gear and, and cameras from Europe. It would uh, import cheap cameras from Asia, rebrand them with Hanamix name. In fact it was going so well that when Vivitar was struggling and had bad financial years, Hanamix bought Vivitar and within a year had them making a profit. Gestetna then bought out Hanamix. Gestetna themselves were then bought out by Ricoh. From there, Fujifilm bought the Hanamix group off Ricoh and still own it. In fact, if you type in hanamix.com.au, you end up at Fujifilm. So, Fujifilm, no, that's pushing it, isn't it? So I've obviously got some film in this thing. What have I got? I've got some uh, 
black and white, uh, 36 right, uh, yeah, that's too big. Uh, here we go, 12 exposures, 200 ASA. That'll do me. Color. Done. Okay, so let's get this happening. 12 shot, go to color VR, color prints. Great stuff. Right. Open up the back. Pull the lever down. There we go. Lead the tongue into the slot. Stick it in a bit. Pull that up to let the film go in. Tension it a bit. Close the back. Wind it on a couple of times. One more. Okay. There you go. Job done. Yeah, I'm going to take this for a spin. I've put a 12 shot film in it because I don't want to waste too much film and just a little point and shoot. I'm going to go out and have me some fun. 80s style. So, saturated colours. Uh, welcome to the 80s where flares aren't uh, just what you wear. Yeah, some film cutoffs there where it doesn't wind on properly. Heavy, heavy grain in the shadows. Uh, a bit better in bright sun. Limited colour palette. Some more flares there pointing into the sun. And there's the end of the film. <laughs> a great bit of end roll there. Hey, so if you're watching my last video, I introduced this thing, buy me a coffee. And uh, yeah, if you click on the link, you can show a bit of support and appreciation and buy this old guy a coffee or a beer, whatever. So anyway, the link's below. And whatever you do, pick up your camera, whatever it is, go for a walk and have some fun. Bye.